You have been told to limit eggs, but what if your genes are begging for more? Roughly three in four people carry a gene that makes them need more of a forgotten essential nutrient in eggs, a nutrient most people are missing. And without it, your brain, your liver, even your future kids could pay the price. Let me show you how your DNA might be rewriting the rules on nutrition and how to support your body needs, even if you don't eat eggs. I am Dr. Lucia Aronica, Stanford lecturer in epigenetics and nutrigenomics, and today we are exposing three overlooked facts that could flip your entire view on eggs and health. First, What's the essential nutrient 90% of people lack? And why were eggs wrongly blamed when they're actually the solution? Second, how does one common gene change how much of this nutrient your body needs? And third, what are the real risks to your brain, liver, and even your future children if you are deficient? And what can you do today to fix it? No? you don't need a genetic test to find out. In fact, let's start with a simple food quiz that might work better than a genetic test. Count along with me. How many whole eggs did you eat yesterday? Any beef liver? Salmon? Brussels sprouts? Broccoli? If you had fewer than two whole eggs and skipped most of the other foods, you're probably not getting enough of a nutrient that 90% of people are deficient in. Don't worry, you are not alone, but that doesn't make it okay. Drop your egg count in the comments below. I'm curious to see where most of you land. What's this missing nutrient? It's called choline. And yes, the name comes from the same Greek root as cholesterol because it's found in the same cholesterol-rich foods like eggs and liver. But because cholesterol-rich foods were demonized for decades, we now have a widespread choline deficiency. And no, dietary cholesterol won't raise your blood cholesterol. That myth has been fully debanked, yet the scare persists and people are still skipping these foods and unknowingly damaging their health. Now, here's where conventional nutrition advice completely falls apart. You have probably been told that a balanced diet gives you everything your body needs, but with choline, that's not just wrong. It's setting people up for deficiency. Choline isn't spread evenly across the food supply. It's concentrated in a few specific foods, especially animal products, that many people either avoid or rarely eat. To hit the daily recommended amount, you'd need about three to four eggs a day or one egg plus four ounces of liver or massive amounts of other foods. If you are plant-based, that means seven to eight cups of broccoli or more than six cups of quinoa every single day. That's not balance, that's a full-time job. For decades, scientists assumed the body could make enough choline on its own. But in the 1990s, researchers ran a bold experiment. They removed all dietary choline from people's diet and waited. Within weeks, most people developed fatty liver disease and other organ issues. The message was clear. Choline isn't optional, it's essential. In 1998, choline was officially declared an essential nutrient. Just one more reminder that science evolves, and so should our views. So what exactly does choline do? Think of it as your body's multitasker, handling four critical jobs at once. First, cell structure. 
it builds every cell membrane in your body. And during pregnancy, when you are literally creating a new human, the demand skyrockets. Second, brain function. Your brain turns choline into acetylcholine, the neurotransmitter for learning, memory, and focus. It's the electrical wiring of cognition. Third, fat transport. Your liver uses choline to make DLDL particles. Think of them as shipping containers that move fat out of the liver. Without enough choline, fat just piles up, leading to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or NFLD. It now affects 33% of Americans and up to 25% of people worldwide. Insulin resistance and excess weight are also drivers, but choline intake can help offset those risks. Fourth, gene regulation. Choline acts as a metal donor. It donates metal groups, tiny chemical tags that act like switches, turning genes on or off, shaping everything from brain development to your future risk of anxiety and depression. Now, here's the problem. Most people aren't getting close to what their bodies actually need. The recommended intake is 425 milligrams for women and 550 for men. But on average, women get just 278 milligrams and men about 402. That's not a small gap. That's a full-blown deficiency in a nutrient that supports your brain, your liver, and your genes. So, we know choline is essential, and most people aren't getting enough. But here's where it gets personal. Some people make a little extra choline on their own. Others can't. And it all comes down to hormones and your DNA. Remember that deprivation study? Here's what shocked researchers. Not everyone got sick. Most men and postmenopausal women did. But about half of premenopausal women didn't. Why? Because your body can make choline, but only in small amounts, thanks to an enzyme called PEMT, which is activated by estrogen. Estrogen is like the master switch that powers your choline factory. Premenopausal women with high estrogen should have their factory running at full power, but about 74% of people carry gene variants that make PEMT work less efficiently. So even with estrogen, their factory runs on low power. That's exactly what we saw in the study. Premenopausal women with high estrogen and good genes could compensate. Everyone else, they got sick. Now, here's where it really matters. During pregnancy, estrogen levels skyrocket, so PMT should too. But if you have a weak gene variant, the response is blunted. And even independently of your genetics, studies show that giving pregnant women double the recommended choline, 930 milligrams instead of 450, can lead to better brain development, attention span, and emotional resilience in their children. We are talking about measurable differences in cognition that can affect academic performance, plus lower risks of anxiety, ADHD, and depression later in life. Why? Because choline fuels the production of tiny chemical tags called metal groups. And during pregnancy, those tags help reprogram stress-related genes like cortisol. It's like installing a better thermostat in your child's brain before 
they are even born. The good news, you don't need a fancy lab testing to take action today. This is about nutritional insurance. Whether you won the genetic lottery or not, chances are you are still not getting enough. And if that little fool quiz from earlier left you concerned, don't worry, I've got you covered with a simple fix. I call it the egg-centric approach for those who eat eggs and the plant power-up for those who are fully plant-based. Both are simple science-backed ways to work with your genetics, not against them. The egg-centric approach is a straightforward daily habit. Two whole eggs a day, yolks included, give you about 300 milligrams of choline. That gets you more than halfway to your daily target. Add in some salmon, chicken, or cruciferous veggies, and you are easily meeting your needs. The plant power up is more challenging, but not impossible. Focus on soy-based foods like tofu and tempeh, and add wheat germ to smoothies, and prioritize cruciferous vegetables like Brussels sprouts and broccoli. But realistically, most vegans and any pregnant woman aiming for that 930 milligram dose found to be optimal for a child's brain will need a supplement. My recommendation, soy lecithin is food-like, well-absorbed and gentle on digestion. Two tablespoons a day can match the choline into eggs. Prefer pills? Choline chloride and choline bitartrate are well-studied, affordable options, especially for general health and during pregnancy. But if you're looking to boost focus during demanding times, like work or school, CDP choline or alpha GPC may be better choices for brain support. Now, I know what you are thinking. Don't choline supplements raise a heart-harming compound called TMAO? That's a hot topic. And a story for another video, but here's the short version. I'm not concerned. Fish is one of the richest sources of TMAO, and it's one of the most heart-healthy foods we know. TMAO builds up in people who can't process or clear it properly because of kidney issues, microbiome problems, or other factors. It's a marker of imbalance, not the cause. Now you understand why your genes might be demanding more eggs than the guidelines admit, but eggs are just a start. If you want to optimize your entire kitchen for better gene expression, grab my free kitchen science guide to unlock your food's superpowers. Link is in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, you love this one, where I reveal another surprising genetic secret about your health. Ciao.